I'm sorry, David. Oh. All I need to do is raise my hands. I'm telling you. Thank you. Whatever you did, David, thank you for fixing it. Let me try this again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you and good to be here. We have a few announcements this morning. If you're joining us uh, online this morning, we want to ask you to, uh, if you would, send a, drop us an email. Let us know that you are attending online. If you're here in person, you'll find the attendance pads at the end of the pew. Make sure you fill those out and leave them then at the end of the pew so that we can have a record of your attendance. Pass them down, too, uh, if, uh, if there's folks on your row as well. I want to remind you, too, this morning to check out the opportunities to participate in the clothing ministry. There's a table out uh, in the foyer with a list of, of things that you can do and be a part of. Uh, you can choose one of those things or several of those things according to what you would like to do and what you have time for. So check that out. And if you still haven't decided, and it's not too late, and there's not a penalty for starting late, if you would like to engage in a Lenten discipline, there are still a few suggestions out in the bowls on the table in the foyer. Uh, again, there's, uh, those, they're kind of color-coded. Uh, you probably want to take one of the blues, uh, but the others you can kind of mix and match. But take advantage of this time of Lenten. Again, there's no penalty to start late, uh, but to, uh, to choose an, something to lead you through the rest of the Lenten season to remind you of the sacrifice that Christ has made for us. And in keeping with that, this, this second week of Lent, we light the Christ candle this morning with an understanding that, that these days in Lent, that Christ is there to light the way for us in those things that we've determined that we're going to use as disciplines, but also just in our daily life, that that light is there available for us. We do not have to walk in darkness. If you ever want to please stand in body or spirit and please join in our call to worship as printed in the bulletin. As God set Abram, Sarai, and Lot on a journey, God calls us to follow in trust. God, God is, is able, able to make us more than, than we have, have been, been and blesses, blesses us on the way. As Jesus invited Nicodemus to be born again, Christ invites us to become a new creation. Christ calls us out of darkness into the marvelous light, and we are saved through him. Let us pray. God, our helper, our shade, our protector, you are able to give life to the dead, to call into being things that do not exist. We trust in your power to make all things new, to keep us in sunlight and moonlight along rocky paths and pathways unknown until all our going and coming brings us at last to your kingdom promised in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. If everyone please remain standing in body or spirit, and let's join in singing our opening hymn, number 37, Let All Things Now Living. Friends at home, the lyrics be on your screen. <laughs>
may be seated. We cannot earn God's grace or favor. It comes to us not as something owed, but as a gift freely given, confident in God's love for us, even when we are ungodly, we confess our sins in faith. Please join in our prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin. Gracious God, we come before you in need of forgiveness. You called us to trust in you completely, but we do not. We are timid and fearful as we follow your lead. We justify our actions and words, though we know they are not what you require. We struggle to understand the new life Christ offers, preferring old habits to risky change. Forgive us, we pray. Help us to be born again into the life of Christ, trusting that you have included us by grace in the family of faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, God is for us and not against us. And for that reason, Christ came to the world not to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Hear the good news, folks. In Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ be with you all. And also with you. Share that peace, share a sign of peace with one another this morning as you greet one another. Let us pray. Gods of signs and wonders, we come to your word again and again, seeking understanding and the new life it offers. By the power of your Holy Spirit, illumine our hearts and minds so that we may believe this testimony and have eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and savior, we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4a. May we take comfort in God, our helper, as we hear scripture read. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, choir and Kurt and Marcy. That's incredible. <coughs> uh, you know, hard act to follow this morning, but I'll do the best I can. Thank you, guys. It really was wonderful. Our second scripture this morning from the New Testament, from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a, uh, uh, a background to... Uh, the passage in Genesis this morning that that I think we ought to cover just to give a little uh, a little run up to it. Uh, you all know that story, the the call of of Abra or Abram. I'm going to say Abraham about half the time whenever I reference that. So just you know, give me a little grace. I know his name is not Abraham yet, but uh, it will be soon enough. So if I mess that up, you just forgive me. But the background of Abram uh, in this case. Uh, the previous two chapters to verse or to chapter 12 verses or chapters 10 and 11 are, are really kind of the beginning or, or the end of the prehistory of the, the children of Israel. Uh, you've got the descendants from Noah, Shem, down through uh, Abram's uh, father, Terah. And, uh, uh, and, and so if you read those two chapters prior to that, you get a lot of names and, you know, they begat so and so and and, and on through that. And in the middle of that, uh, just kind of squeezed in, is the story of the Tower of Babel uh, and God dispersing people. Uh, and that little phrase in there that's always interesting uh, to me that, uh, uh, you know, that God essentially says there's going to be nothing impossible for this people, which I think is a great encouragement to all of us that God recognizes potential in us uh, even sometimes when we don't. But that's aside. From that, we come up to Abraham or Abram uh, being called out. You see, Abram's father originally was supposed to go to the to the promised land. The scripture says in chapter eleven that uh, that Terah was on his way there with with his sons, but he stopped in Haran and settled there. Now there's. I, I think we'll be out, if I can maintain some uh, 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 continuity in the message, I think we'll be out by 1.30 or 2. It may be 3 if we, if we push too far into this history. But it's really interesting uh, because there are a lot of lessons in this that are just so practical for us today. Uh, that Terra settled uh, is one of those. And I, I have to stop there just for a moment. Have you ever settled I mean, it's really tragic oftentimes. Whenever we know we could have done better or pushed further, but just settling for 
second best sometimes or even third or fourth. And so it's kind of tragic that Terah did that. But it gave an opportunity for Abram to do something that up to then had really not been done. You know the story there, and, and Kurt read it. Uh, the Lord said to Abram, go. Go from your country, from your kindred, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I'll bless you. And in all the nations of the world and all the people of the world will be blessed through you. What did Abram have to leave? Now, we, we understand and appreciate security uh, here in our nation and in our family and our lives. We like things to be, you know, the way that we want them to be. And we, we lock our doors at night, uh, you know, with this illusion of security and things that are, you know, going to be the same way that we want them to be when we wake up the next morning. And so for Abram to hear this call from God to leave family, to leave country, to leave really everything that was familiar to him, everything that had made him what he was up to that point, everything that, that he had experienced to leave and go to this undiscovered country was a huge, huge step. To, to, to take his wife, Sarah, and, and you have to also keep in mind, too, that Sarah, it's already, we've, we've already found out earlier in, in chapter 11, that Sarah has no children. She can't have children. And so the security of Abram's family beyond that extended family was even greater. He knew leaving with her, they would be very, very much alone. Now, he took Lot, his nephew. Lot's father had died uh, before that. And so he did take Lot when he left. But really, the, the call was not to and take your nephew, too. Uh, now, we've experienced some of that, you know, growing up, if we had younger brothers or if we had an older brother, um, you know, well, you can't go unless you take, you know, so-and-so with you. Uh, we were, uh, Jack and I were watching a movie last night about Elvis Presley, and I was reminded of whenever I got to see Elvis as a, about a 14-year-old, I think it was 1974, I don't know, it's earlier, uh, it's several years ago. And I wanted to go because we were big Elvis fans, and I had always dreamed that one day I would be able to attract girls by playing a guitar and singing to them. And, um, and so I figured to see Elvis in person would probably push me a little further down uh, that road. And uh, Elvis was coming to Fort Worth, Texas to, the, uh, to do a concert, and my brother, older brother, three years older, was going to go. And uh, my mom said, well, you can't go unless you take Tracy. So I got to see Elvis. And so I think that some of that is, is not, a, wasn't a, not a stretch to think, okay, well, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not going by myself. I'm going to take my little brother's son with me. I'm going to take Lot with me because we don't know where we're going. Have you ever done that? Have you ever just decided to strike out into undiscovered countries, places you've never been? And in fact, not just... We, we tend to go some places with a destination in mind. We know where we're going to go. And we're going to map it out on MapQuest or put it in our phone so that we don't make a wrong turn. And we hope that the, you know, that the, the GPS or the Waze takes us around the accident so that we get there in an appropriate amount of time. We're never in question as to where we're going to end up. But Abram was. Abram didn't know where he was going. Can you imagine the faith? that it took to leave family and kin and say, I'm going to go. I'm going to follow. And it, it's, it's such an amazing example of faith, so much so that the Scripture says that Abram believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, our goal through Lent is to become a more righteous people, a, a people that look more like Christ. Sad to say, we all know that we're oftentimes not a very righteous bunch. And sometimes we see self-righteousness in folks and don't necessarily appreciate it. But for Abram's belief and trust to take those steps, to go someplace he'd never been and didn't know where he was going, was said he was, that was credited to him as righteousness. In other words, he was in right standing with God. No questions asked. It's an interesting concept because you also know that Abram, you know, wasn't exactly perfect. As time went on, there were several times when he doubted God and didn't have faith and didn't have trust. If you remember whenever God said, I'm going to make you a great nation, and Abram said, well, Sarah's, you know, getting on in age, and I'm a little older than she is. We're probably not going to have children now, Lord. And, and God said, oh, yeah, you're going to have children. 
And, and he said, okay, well, whatever you say, uh, but, you know, we'll see. And so Abraham decided to take that into his own hands. And so when the Lord comes back and says, by the way, you're going to be the, the father of a great nation, and Abraham says, well, how many children do you see around here? And, I mean, you, you, you've got Ishmael. And the Lord says, no, not, not Ishmael, but a son of your own will be born to you. And, of course, you remember the story of Sarah laughing in the tent and the Lord going to her and saying, you know, who's laughing? And Sarah says, well, it wasn't me. I wasn't laughing. Maybe you heard somebody in the next tent laughing, but, you know, I, I wasn't laughing. And, and the Lord essentially says, well, Sarah, I'll tell you what, I'll be back this time next year, and we'll see who's laughing then for your labor and delivery. And so it wasn't that Abram was this perfect man. He certainly questioned, but he was willing to go to undiscovered country. And then a few centuries later, we... Uh, we find this other guy, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is a, is a ruler. He's a, an educated man, a member of the Sanhedrin, a, 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 a religious leader. And he hears something in the message that Christ is, is sharing that makes him wonder if he's willing to go to some place that he's never been. And so you know the, the story, we read it a minute ago, he comes to him by night uh, comes to Jesus by night, Nicodemus does, and says, Rabbi, he already is recognizing that Jesus is special. He's called him Rabbi, even though as far as we know, Jesus has not gone to any of those rabbinical schools. But because of the authority with which he teaches, Nicodemus already recognizes that he's something special. And he says, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God. No one could do what you're doing uh, unless he came from God. But, I need to know more. Now, unlike, or not, not unlike, but like Abram, Nicodemus was in a situation where he was going to have to give up an awful lot if he was going to come out in the daytime and trust God. He had a lot to lose. He, had, had, uh, he risked his social status. He risked his religious prominence and his leadership uh, position in the community to being on the Sanhedrin who were eventually going to, you know, uh, crucify Jesus, and to come to Jesus and say, tell me more. These two guys are, are not unlike one another. Now, you know, Nicodemus shows up a couple of more times uh, in John's gospel. In fact, he was one of those with Joseph of Arimathea who, who brought the, the spices and so forth to, to get Jesus' burial done correctly. But at this time, Nicodemus is just a little apprehensive. He doesn't, not sure that, that he wants to, to really be associated with Jesus, and yet still he's drawn to Christ. And so Jesus says, well, I, you know, let me give you a, a, a little illustration here. Uh, you're going to need to go someplace you've never been. You're going to need to go someplace that you don't, there's no map for you're going to need to be born again. And Nicodemus, you know, and we often wonder, did Nicodemus really think or, or say, well, wait a minute, a man can't go back and be born again, can he? I mean, was he just being a little, little incredulous on that? But, you know, that's what the scripture says. And so Jesus certainly takes him at that and says, there are a lot of things that you're not going to understand, Nicodemus. Have you figured out the wind? It blows where it wants to. It comes from here. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. There's a lot of things that you're not going to understand, but you're going to need to have faith to take this step into this new undiscovered country that we're going to call being born again. Now, the question this morning for us is, what do we have in common with these two gentlemen? And are we willing to, which of these are we willing to, to emulate, if you will? For Abram, as he is called and, and given this, this uh, uh, urging to go to a place he'd never been. He trusted, and it was credited as righteousness. For Nicodemus, it was, I, I just want to know a little bit more. Now, my question, I guess this morning for all of us, is are we willing to go to undiscovered country? Are we willing to go, uh, as, as, as Christians, as spiritual beings, as followers of Christ, are we willing to go to places that we've not been before? 
Are we willing to go to places that we've not been before and we don't really know the way to that because we're willing to trust God? And, and this undiscovered country may be, uh, you know, a new relationship or a, a, a repaired relationship. It could be a new job or a change of job. It could be uh, a, a, just a new normal in our lives because we've lost a loved one. There's undiscovered country in all of our lives. Our question and our challenge is, will we enter those undiscovered countries in faith or doubt? Abram entered in faith. And, and you know the story. Uh, he did have lots of children. He did make it to the promised land. Uh, the, the entire world continues to be blessed uh, because of Abram. Nicodemus, we don't know that much about. And so for us, we get to choose. Are we going to be a people who goes to undiscovered country, who goes to those places that we've not been before in our faith, trusting God? Or are we going to continue to ask questions and look for signs? Are we willing to be born again? And, you know, we oftentimes think, well, that's a, that's a one-time thing. Not the case. What Jesus was saying to Nicodemus about being born again was not that, okay, and once this is over, you're done. It's an over and over thing. As we enter undiscovered country in our relationship with God, in our relationship with one another, as we explore ways to become more Christ-like, it happens over and over and over again. And so this morning, the, the challenge as we move through Lent is, are we going to push? Are we going to not settle? Are we going to grow? I mean, I hope we are. That's what we're called to do. Because there is undiscovered country in each of our spiritual lives that is a rich, rich place if we will trust God and go there. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the Lord. It is said that they will come from near and far, east and west, north and south, and share at the table of the Lord. This is the table and the, 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 uh, uh, the opportunity that we have during this Lenten season and all times to come together and remember the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so, according to Luke, when the Lord called the disciples together for that last supper, he took bread, he broke it, he took the cup and blessed it. And if you'll join with me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our creator. You have given us life and second birth in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. You claimed Israel as your chosen nation and raised up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and power. From worlds apart, you gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcome us home. Always your love has been steadfast. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of God. Holy, holy, holy. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In love with you and in compassion for all, Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed and saved. He formed a community, promising to be with his disciples wherever two or three were gathered, and sending them on his mission of hope and healing in the world. Jesus trusted his life to you 
and went freely to his death so the world might be set free from suffering and sin. You raised him from death and raised us also to live a new life with him. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you send us out to make disciples as he commanded. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you've given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. May the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Take your wafer. The body of Christ, broken for you. If you'll take the cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. All that we have here is a gift from God. In faith and gratitude, we return now a portion of what we have so abundantly received as grateful heirs of the promises of God. You're invited to leave your gift in the offering plate in the narthex as you exit the sanctuary after worship. Give electronically via our online portal or to mail your offering into the church. For those of you at home, the mailing address is displayed at the end of this video. Please rise as you are able for our doxology. Thank you. Gracious God, we dedicate to you not only these gifts, but also ourselves in deep gratitude for your call on our lives, your guidance in the baptismal journey, and for blessing us that we may be a blessing to others. Accept what we bring for your own good purposes. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join in our affirmation of faith as printed in the bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I know this week as we begin our prayers for the people, we have 
a, a couple of specific. Deborah Ashley, uh, many of you know, was admitted in the hospital again uh, yesterday, and so we want to remember Deborah this week, as well as your list of, of, of prayers that you found in your bulletin. I want to remind you, uh, on Wednesday, there's a Zoom prayer meeting at 10 a.m. If you can be a part of that, the instructions are on the website, and you probably know them by now. Uh, and so join with that if you can. But if not, take that paper. Don't, don't leave that in the pew and don't, don't drop it in the basket on your way out. But take that prayer request sheet and break it up. Uh, there's, uh, I don't know, probably 60 or so folks on there. Many that you know uh, that have prayer needs. And uh, maybe take a, a little time each day to pray for some of those folks. Um, as a lot of our church family and, and an extended family as well. So as we as we think about you know as a as a well lord teaching us to pray thank you kurt for the reminder this morning let's do that let's, let's don't just uh give lip service to it but also heart service as well and so now you, you join me we'll pray god our helper we thank you for keeping our lives always in your care and protection and we pray for any and all who are in harm's way for those walking in the midst of danger for those treading a slippery path for those exhausted and seeking relief for those who have a mountain of worry worry whether it be debt other obstacles or just life in general lord we ask that you be our guardian and guide we pray lord that you would give us the strength and the courage to go to undiscovered country to choose to follow you in faith we pray for those lord in our congregation who are suffering who are ill we pray for deborah ashley and many others uh, on the list this morning, asking God that, that you strengthen us all in faith and that you guide us to next steps, both as individuals and as a church body. And we thank you and praise you for that guidance. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And, you know, I'm just a little off my game this morning, and I apologize for that. I'm, I'm missing... Uh, some segues from time to time. So now then, if you will join me, we will have the Lord's Prayer. And let's, you know, just as a reminder to me, if nothing else, let's be really loud with this, okay? And let's say it like we mean it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'll please stand in body or spirit and join in singing our closing hymn, number 190, Swiftly Past the Clouds of Glory. Lyrics will be on screen for our friends at home.
way. We go out in faith this week, trusting God's direction, even though we may not know exactly where that's going. And as a reminder, I will be gone from you for a couple of weeks. Uh, you'll enjoy uh, uh, Julie Adkins the next couple of Sundays. Uh, she's, she's quite a girl. I think you'll really enjoy having her uh, fill the pulpit. Uh, and I will see you all soon in that regard. So as I go out, you've got to pray for me that I trust God's direction too, okay? And, uh, and as you go, know that God walks before you and behind you and blesses you every step.